Hi all and welcome to this video in which I will show how to set up your Python environment for satellite data processing using GDAL and TensorFlow and some other libraries. I am explicitly mentioning these two because these are somewhat uh, tricky to install while others are relatively simpler. Okay, as I showed in previous videos, this is the GitHub repository I am maintaining to add resources and links for uh, all the videos in this playlist. So for today's video, we have these following links. But before we get started, I want to show you uh, that I don't have that Python installed in my PC right now. Uh, this is my C drive. There's only one Python 39, which is Python 3.9. In this video, I'll show how to uh, download Python 3.7. Obviously, uh, latest and newer versions are always available but I recommend not to rush to a latest version because dependencies for s newer versions are not readily available and uh, older versions are slightly uh, much more stable. For instance, GDAL for the latest version of Python may not be very easy to install as compared to a slightly old version. Uh, I'll go to this first link, which is Python and GDAL uh, installation, uh, an article that I wrote on Medium to show how to install these. So you can click on this and go to the GitHub repo. Based on your uh, computer system, whether it's 32 bit or 64 bit, you can click on any bat file. You can uh, click raw, then right click and save as. The catch here is that you don't have to save it as text document. You have to make it all files and then you need to uh, remove the extension. I've already saved it here. Just click on it and save it. Now that it is saved, I'll go to the directory and simply open it as administrator. So the program has started downloading setup files which are stored in this folder. After it completes, you can uh, remove this folder for now. Don't touch it. So these are the versions it's installing from um, the web, Python 3.7.9 and compatible GDAL version and so on. So the download is now complete and the installation will automatically proceed for installation. You don't have to click on install now. Go to customize installation. Next, you can shorten this path to simply Python 37, like I showed Python 39 was there. Just keep it Python 37 so that it's easier to use later. Okay, Python installation is now complete. I'll click on close. And automatically this new uh, setup window opens up for GDAL uh, installation. I'll click on next. Uh, because I already have a GDAL, so for you, you will get an option for install. I'm getting change, repair or remove. I'll click on repair and then proceed. Okay, Jira installation is also completed. I'll, I'll click on finish. A new setup is here, which is GDAL for Python. I'll leave this default. Next, Python 3.7 from registry. Next. Okay, so what this has done is uh, this shows success for adding all the variables to path. For some people, I've come to know that f in some systems it doesn't automatically add it to the path. So you need to manually do it. I'll show you how to do it. This part is done. So you can uh, press enter or close this window. So to add anything to path, you have to click on your PC, right click, go to properties go to advanced system settings this will open up you have to go to environment variables so here uh, you have to create a couple of variables this has to be done manually ideally this would happen automatically in the script because that's what it is um, designed for to create system variables but if at all by some chance it doesn't add you can do that easily so let's say you go to c drive program files you check where your gdal is so you need to add a couple of things you can uh, use this as a reference so your gdal data path this path you can simply copy here create a new one here in caps you can write gdal path 
and then in variable value you can add this and click on OK because I already have it I won't do it and then you have GDAL driver path so in, instead of GDAL data you go to GDAL plugins copy this path and create the same thing GDAL version based on which version you have installed you enter it here similarly you click on this path which is all the system variables path you click on edit here also you have to add GDAL to the path for instance here C program files GDAL is already added to my path plus now if you when you go to C drive you have Python 37 installed you have to click on you have to copy this path also and create a new variable and copy that path here you need to copy that plus this scripts path okay so you add python 37 scripts and you add python 37 click on okay 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 now the other thing that you need to change let's say you are using different versions of python so uh, you you need to call them differently in command prompt if you are using anything else ideal etc it's fine but you uh, just for reference you need uh, just for simplicity you need to define which version that Python is so you have to rename your python.exe file to python37.exe file okay because I already did it in a previous installation somehow it somehow it is already showing it here so the value of adding anything to the path is that you can call Python and everything from any directory that you want okay now when I do python37 this opens my other python uh, the new python installation that i did and when i import gdal gdal installation is complete for now i can exit python you need to install other libraries too which you can easily do by simply typing python 37 dash m pip install let's say anything else you need pandas you need matplotlib uh, PyRSGIS which will be used in the rest of this uh, video and then scikit-learn and so on and then you can hit enter so how to find these uh, commands while it's installing you need to find anything for instance you want to install PyRSGIS so you find pip install PyRSGIS so it will take you to the PyPy page which is the official Python packaging index and here is the command that you need assuming that you have different Python versions on your system you need this extra you need to define which Python version you want to install this to and in addition to that you can specify multiple libraries that you want to install okay so while this is installing our Python and GDAL installation is now complete the next thing is tensorflow so if you find pip install tensorflow the process is same but the problem is that tensorflow comes with two different types one is the standard one which doesn't use GPU and the other one is tensorflow GPU which uses your graphic card uh, to speed up your processing so uh, you can the basic version you can install in the similar way that I showed for other libraries but for GPU the installation is slightly tricky so I'll come back to this github repository now uh, this is the third thing which is CUDA and tensorflow compatibility test link before installing tensorflow you click on this link and uh, it's already windows you go to the GPU section here towards the bottom of this page this is CPU this is GPU this will give you a good sense of uh, which tensorflow version is compatible with what Python version which compiler do you want Microsoft Visual uh, which built uh, which CUDA and uh, CUDNN version you want so we are working with let's say a uh, tensorflow 2.2.0 point point oh, th that's what I'll be showing we have Python 3.7 which is fine see this is also one of the reasons I said not to install 3.9 or a latest version because these will take some time to adapt latest Python version Microsoft uh, Visual Code you can install 17 and then uh, CUDA you want 10 and CUDNN 7.4 so these are a couple of things uh, we are interested in so first we need Microsoft Studio Visual Code 2017 you can come to this github repository and click on this link 
you can go to 2017 and uh, download the community version you need to log into your Microsoft account once you log in you will have these many options click on Visual Studio Community 2017 download click on it so here you can see workloads individual components and everything uh, you click on install which will take some time but uh, continue the un installation is now complete there is option to update but I'll ignore it for now I'll close this now the next thing to install is uh, CUDA and uh, CUDNN relevant versions so I'll start with uh, CUDA make sure that you don't jump into the latest version this is the specific version that we are interested in there will always be a newest available version but we always have to go for the compatible one I'll click on Windows uh, the only option then 10 I'll do it local and then this is the 2.1 GB file when I click on it download will start I'll close this for now now the next thing to do is CUDNN 7.4 again you have a latest version here but I'll go to archive which is the first option in this archive I'll do control F for version 7.4 these are all the options for CUDA 10 there are two options uh, 7.4.1 and uh, 4.2 when you click on this uh, you get different options I'll do download it for Windows 10 now it will ask you to log into your NVIDIA account either you create an account or login I'll uh, log in and download this file okay so I have downloaded my CUDA and CUDNN files here I'll right click on CUDA and install it so the setup window will pop up I'll click OK and it will take some time and whatever comes after that I'll keep everything default and just keep pressing next until it finishes Now that CUDA de installation has completed, I'll extract the CUDNN files to this repository. So this is now extracted. I'll open this, copy all these files, go to my C drive, find where CUDA is installed, program files, NVIDIA GPU CUDA version 10. So you see all the bin etc folders that I copied from here and all of those are here you just paste it and replace all the files okay so the now next thing is that you go back to this github repository and go to the fourth link CUDA path uh, we need to add CUDA part to system environment variables open this link so this is the tensorflow GPU installation page these are the ones that we have installed in sequence when you go down you need to all these variables to your path you can do it by command also but like I showed previously you can click on properties advanced system settings environment variables go to path and you need to add these like it showed here I'll add them one by one I'll click on bin here I'll create a new one paste bin I've added all the variables as shown on the web page these three I'll click on OK now as a safe side it's best to add like GDAL data and driver path we have created it's best to add another two variables CUDA path and uh, CUDA version path and in that you can add the main uh, directory CUDA directory this will help in avoiding complications at a later stage I'll click on OK now that we are back to the directory what we need to do is install tensorflow now so I'll uh, so the simple and best way to do it is use pip command 
as simple as this pip install tensorflow gpu and the version because we have opted for version 2.0.0 that's what i'll do Our TensorFlow installation is now complete without any major issues, which is a good thing. So now the ideal thing would be to restart your computer and if not, at least restart your command prompt. CD this path then D. I mean, it can be anywhere. I'm just showing it for reference. Now I'll open Python 37. I'll import TensorFlow as TF. So the import is now complete and it says that successfully opened dynamic uh, library CUDA art which shows that it, the integration of CUDA with TensorFlow is successfully done. Uh, this can take a couple of minutes while importing. Uh, while importing. The main thing that you have to be very uh, cautious about is that whenever you use this you have to plug in if you are using laptop you have to plug in your system and uh, these processes CUDA and everything is only for GPU version of TensorFlow. So um, uh, to check the installation, you can also use this command. So I've used this command tf.test is GPU available. It's opening and uh, checking if the GPU is available or not, which returns a true statement, which is GPU installation is now complete. And this is my GPU device, which is successfully shows. Uh, adding visible GPU devices zero doesn't mean there are zero GPU devices. Uh, a lot of you already know that let's say uh, Python indexing starts from zero. So this shows the zeroth device, which means the first device. Okay. So hope you understood the process of uh, installing Python GDAL and TensorFlow. Uh, there are many small, small details that I might have missed. If there's confusion regarding anything, uh, feel free to comment uh, below. I'll put all the link in the description of this video, uh, the GitHub repository also, and hope you'll be able to do it yourself. Thanks for watching this and see you in the next video.